Hi, everybody. I'm Bobby Parrish. Welcome to another day of our Trauma Recovery Coaching Summit, sponsored by the International Association of Trauma Recovery Coaching. I'm the Executive Director of the Association. And hi, I'm Sarah Parrish, and I'm the Deputy Director. Okay, we have an enormous treat for you today in terms of the coach that we have presenting. I do want to give you a trigger warning, okay? Some of the things that we talk about in this video and all the videos may be triggering to you, so make sure and use your best self-care skills. Thanks, Bobby. So today we have the absolute pleasure and honor in welcoming, welcoming Paulette Bethel. And today Paulette is here to talk to us about identity disruption um, in a way of trauma shocking DNA testing revelations. Paulette, how are you doing today? I'm doing just great, Sarah. Thank you. How are you? I'm really well, thank you. It's just lovely to have you here with us, with everybody. So Paulette, just let um, our listeners, our viewers know just a little bit about your, your history, your background. Okay. Well, I have one of those roundabout histories in terms of coming to this work. I am a retired U.S. Air Force logistics officer. And following a career with the Air Force, I decided to become a marriage and family therapist and then eventually added coaching as a modality and more recently um, doing trauma coaching. Yeah, so how, how did you come upon this field of, let me see if I get it right, Paulette, um, non-paternal event background? Okay, and so... Right. Okay, so um, MPE is how it's commonly known and more originally was known as a non-paternal event, but eventually um, the, the use that's more popular now is called not parent expected, right? Okay. When it was non-paternal event, it, it had a more, um, it wasn't as expansive as it is now. And so there was some adaptation to keep the same acronym because everyone kind of knew NPE, but to uh, do it as a non, um, not parent expected event. Um, and so what that basically is coming to mean is that when people take the commercial DNA tests that are popular right now, like Ancestry DNA, 23andMe, right. My, uh, Heritage, there's different ones that are out there. Very often, people take the test because they're like the family genealogist. They want to know more about the family history and their um, family backgrounds and where they came from. Yeah. Um, some people take the test because they're kind of suspicious about some things in their family and they think that the test may help them um, come up with those responses. Yeah. And in terms of the not parent expected event, a few things happen. One of them is like myself, you take the test because you're the family historian genealogist and you've been researching the family background and you think, oh, wow, if I take the DNA test, I'll get some answers. So I talked an uncle into taking the test and a couple of my siblings and myself and we took the test. And when I took the test personally, yeah. um, within maybe three minutes, I realized that there was a problem with my DNA results. You know, from Lake Houston, there's a problem. Yeah. And I began to realize um, some very devastating uh, news in that my, what's now called uh, attributed parent okay. or birth certificate parent okay. was not my parent. Now he was my birth parent up until I made that discovery with the test. Okay. And then, to, you know, and then to my shock, I realized that this is not my father, and if it's not my birth father, then who is? Um, and so there are thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of us that have made this discovery um, yeah. through the DNA testing. I'm expecting that with Father's Day coming up and all of the DNA gifts that are, yes, yes, that are going to be given out yes. for Father's Day, they're going to be... Uh, some more shockers. Yes. I'm currently part of an, a Facebook group to help people who have gone through this trauma. We currently have uh, about 50, 5,800 members. And to show you how fast this is growing, when I joined about six months ago, it was 3,000 people. It's now almost doubled. 
as the word is getting out about um, people sharing this. Um, and the way I found the group was as I was going through my own shock and trying to understand what was happening, I started wondering were there other people out there who were experiencing this and going through this and needed a support system. And mm -hmm. that's when I found Catherine St. Clair in the NPE fellowship group. Okay. Uh, other ways that people were shocked is maybe they had the suspicion. And so they weren't shocked to discover that it was not the parent, but they were shocked in discovering who the real parent is or was. Uh, many of us that take the test are older, and that's about, I think, economics. We, we have the discretionary funds to do things like buy a kit. So mm -hmm. right now in the group, there tends to be like 40 plus, which means as you get older, the probability that that birth parent um, is alive is not that high. Yeah. And what does that mean? What does, what does that, that mean? mean for, so um, you said that, that the birth parent is not alive. So you know, what does that mean for a survivor? You know, now I know I have, you know, um, not the parent that I was expecting, mm -hmm. but now not only is the, not the parent I was expecting passed away, but perhaps my other parent has passed away. And now what do I do? I can tell you a lot of people are shocked. Um, they're angry. You know, we talked about the trauma cycle and I have come up with, as you know, you and I work together on it. I come up with a, a model to represent that cycle that people go through. And very typically from the moment that's found out, it's not, the, the cycle doesn't go exactly like if there was um, abuse, right? Okay. It's a little yeah. bit different. Yet, I think still all of the reactions in some way manifest in terms of typical trauma reactions. The most common one that I've seen um, is that shock and denial. Uh, and it's really hard to stay in denial because um, as people joke, the DNA does not lie. Yes. So with the DNA not lying, you spend less time in, in denial and more time in that shock where you start feeling numb, right? Yes. Um, and, and feeling kind of crazy, chaotic, confused, a lot of confusion, a lot of confusion. I remember when I first um, really started thinking about what this meant, I was confused because I didn't know who to go to. The people that can answer my questions were the most, for the most part deceased, okay. right? Um, and so, and this happens very often is, and sometimes people will, will figure out that there's a problem with the DNA and they are not who they thought they were, especially if the birth certificate parent also takes the DNA test, right? That's a really clear indication. And, and, and it's kind of what happened with me. My cousin arranged for my, uh, who I thought was my birth father to take the DNA test. She took the DNA test and she called me because I have a feeling our results came in about the same time. And she called me to see if I had gotten my results, but I could tell by the tone of her voice that she'd already gotten his results and confirmed for me that I did not show up in his and he did not show up in mine. And, you know, so it's very disconcerting, right? Yeah. And so, but there are some people who the DNA test has revealed to them that um, their identity is not what they thought it was, but at the same time, they don't have enough information to confirm who it is. And so that's another set of trauma. Um, and then I think what happens is you have like this cascading revelation. Okay. Right. So uh, just about the time that I was driving, then I discovered who the actual birth parent was. And right. seems like a new trauma right. layer. In, right. Um, still moving a little, you know, um, not staying stuck, but just kind of sliding back and moving forward, as you know. Um, so I don't know. Does that help in terms of? It's yes. uh, you wake up one day and your whole identity, that's where the identity disruption piece came in for me, yes. is when I woke up one morning and I had a very specific, well, one half of me, very specific ethnic identity. And then I found out that that was not my ethnic identity. In fact, I was, uh, this morning, I was aware of people joking about not being Italian, right? A lot of people who either 
um, it, it, it's, it's kind of interesting because those that didn't realize that they were Italian and those that thought they were Italian, that very specific, you know, if, if you thought you were Italian, it's a very specific, strong culture that goes with that, right? Yeah. And then you find out. No. No. Right. Yeah. So and there's just only imagine the shock it's kind of given you, Paul, that sort of thing, you know, and this, the, the trauma, you know, the secondary trauma it's given you as well, you know. Mm -hmm. In what ways have you been able to cope with the results and what advice would you give to anybody else who's going through the same situation as you sort of thing, who's getting their results and finding out? No. Well, um, I, was, is, I think the power of relationship and how important relationship is to us when we recover is to find mm -hmm. a good, safe support system. Uh, mm -hmm. There are not a lot of people that understand this, and they will inadvertently say things that will, you know, actually re-traumatize you in the process because they don't understand it. I've uh, I've heard people say, I've had someone say to me, so, "So you're not who you thought you were. Big deal." Right now, I don't think they intended any harm, but I'm inside, I'm ex kind of going, no, it is a big deal. It's, not, it's who I am, right? So finding a good support system, there are not a lot of people that understand this. I think this is so new um, that a lot of people just really won't get it. So one of the things like the, the Facebook group that I joined, that has been a tremendous safety net and support system. And, and I'm not saying that it's perfect by any means, but it's the best that's out there right now. Yes. Um, but finding safe people to share your story and tell your story, right? Uh, and to be affirmed in your story, I think is really important. Finding a good therapist or a good coach. Right now, there are not a lot of therapists or coaches that understand this or can work with this. I'm aware of one person who's out in California and she was sharing with me that her caseload is very busy because she's probably the only one out there that has this skill set around being an NPE. And her deciding to specialize was because she discovered she was an NPE. Oh, wow. Right. And so, but finding a therapist that understands, you know, hopefully finding a therapist or a coach um, that can coach you through this traumatic event and help you to come to some understanding and and and, and hopefully we get to acceptance, right? Mm -hmm. um, to be able to do it. Um, I am now offering coaching services for people who are NPE survivors mm -hmm. uh, because I recognize that there is a need out mm -hmm. there that's not being fulfilled. And so um, I decided to step in and be one of those people that help. Yes. Okay, so Paulette, I know you and I worked on, and you have further fine-tuned this trauma response model for identity disruption due to the NPE event. Can right. you kind of walk us through that? Okay, right. So um, with the model, as we know, I started with the traumatic event. In this case, the, the, the DNA testing results, that, that shock, that initial um, trauma event that happens when you first realize that you're not who you thought you were. And then going through the cycle, you know, starting with um, that shock, I mean, the, the, the denial, the right. shock, and then moving into chaos or confusion or chaos and confusion, just to kind yeah. of depend on how you defined it. Right. And uh, then moving from that and then recognizing that throughout the cycle, you can slide back or there can be a, a new event that happens related to the NPE, right. um, like discovering that you have siblings that you didn't know that you had, discovering who the birth parent is will, you know, second you back with that new event that comes in, yes. and then moving through on to anger, right? A lot of people experience anger with this and and uh and, you know sometimes the anger comes first and then the chaos confusion or you know other ways so it's not like a linear cycle in terms of this re uh, trauma res uh, response model that uh, we put together and going from there to acceptance and then i love the idea of uh, like myself going to advocacy that now that i've made it all the way through this trauma response recovery model is to um, want to go out and help other people um, be able to move through this trauma with some success. Yes, and um, you know, Paulette, you are the perfect advocate 
for people experiencing this type of trauma. So if people are watching this and they're like, oh my gosh, that's me, I had that, where do they find you? Okay, so I can be found at um, drpaulettebethel.com, it's my website, okay, so you can find me there, and there's a link there for you to sign up and, uh, you know, hear back from me. I will be uh, beginning a blog about this, and so pretty soon look for a blog where I talk about these experiences, including mine and those of others, and I want to spend um, time just talking about identity, identity disruption itself and what happens to your sense of self yes. as you're going through this process because um, I believe that we have to develop a new normal in terms of who we see we are and what our sense of self is in the process. Mm -hmm. So I want to begin blogging about okay. it. So look for that coming really soon. Okay. Also. Thank you, Paulette, so much. I'm so happy that we got a chance to sit down and talk with you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Paula. And I just want to say thank you to all the viewers and listeners who've come along today and watched our interview with Paulette. Thank you, Paulette, so much. Um, we have still got plenty more videos for everyone to watch. Um, so please carry on logging in and carry on watching. And until then, hope you all take care and we hope to see you all again soon. Bye, everybody. Bye.